Hi, welcome to my review of Scream 6. This is going to be a completely spoiler-free review. Um, I'm going to touch on some plot points, but obviously I won't go into any of the major details or any of the reveals at all, so you don't have to worry about that. So we're following the same group of characters we were with in Scream 5, directly on from those events where these characters have now moved to New York and they're in college as all of these new ghost face killings begin again. So I've literally just got back from the cinema. I managed to convince one of my friends to come out and see this with me. And I have to say, I had such a good time seeing this. I genuinely think the Scream franchise is gonna go down as one of the most consistent horror franchises ever made. Uh, I don't personally think there's a bad one among them, even the third one, which I actually do have a bit of a guilty pleasure for. I, I, I know a lot of people don't like that one, but, uh, but this is certainly another great addition to the franchise. It's scary, it's funny, it's intense, and it has a lot of really great moments here. So let's get into it. I really love the focus here we get on Sam, which is played by Melissa Barrera. I actually liked her a lot more here than I did in Scream 5. I feel like they just find a way to make her character more compelling here. You feel more invested in her. Um, she's just a very different protagonist to what Sydney was. Uh, you know, Sydney, this character who had to kind of overcome some like weaknesses within herself. And we've gone for something very different here where Sam's a character that has to hold. Her challenges are holding certain things back about her given like this extremely dark past she has and, you know, the, the relations to her family and, and everything like that. The fact that she has these instincts in her that she is in some ways a killer. Uh, and I just love that, that about her. She plays it extremely well and it's something very different. Uh, love the relationship as well between her, her and her sister, of course, the always amazing Jenna Ortega. And these two together just felt like they've really found really good characters to move this franchise forward with. I didn't feel like it was missing Sydney here because I really did find a way to get on board with these new characters uh, and I was very happy to go along with them. Some really intense sequences here and more so I think than a lot of the previous Scream sequels. I did actually feel moments where you are genuinely on the edge of your seat, uh, you know, get your heart pounding. Like there's there's a particular scene um, on a subway in New York where, you know, if you've seen the trailer, you'll know about this scene and they've got, they're on this Halloween night, they've got all these people that are dressed up in costume and these characters kind of going through that paranoia as the lights are coming on and off and they're worried that person that's stalking them is actually on the train with them and just the way that scene plays out is extremely effective. There, there's a lot of very good sequences like that. And as well, just being a modern horror film, you know, this is up to the brutality and the viciousness of, of any of the previous sequels. Um, it's kind of goes to show, you know, in modern film, when you compare it to like the original screams that I've been watching uh, recently, you know, the violence is ramped up to another level here. Uh, they don't hold back at all, that's for sure. You know, it's a lot of kills, a lot of really bloody, gory violence. Uh, so if you enjoy all of that, there is a lot, there is a lot of that here, that's for sure. The, the kill sequences and a lot of these uh, scenes with the chases and stuff, they're really well done. Something I'm really surprised I'm saying here is I actually love the comedy they put in this one. It's definitely the funniest of all of the screen films. Um, you know, a lot of really hilarious lines they come out with and just really like well-timed moments of humour. And that's something I've usually been really critical of, especially in horror movies where you have this kind of forced humour. I don't know why movies seem to love doing this. It's like in moments cutting tension by adding in these one-liners and lame jokes. I can't stand when they do that. It was something I was really critical of the recent Halloween movies, uh, all those sequels we've had um, recently where, you know, you'd have like an, a sequence that's designed to be intense. It's meant to be scary. And oh, they just decide to cut the tension with just a ridiculous joke. And I really hated that. And I love here that they just found really good ways to place humour into nice moments. They had some really funny moments, but it was never taking away from the scary sequences or some of the more emotional scenes. It kind of know, it knew where to place itself uh, and it was much more effective from that. So I really loved that about this. I liked the little bit of social commentary as well that Scream 6 touched on where, you know, you have the internet blowing up a story from a, a video that goes viral. And, you know, they're the ones that kind of judge a character without knowing everything. They kind of build up this own story in their heads about all of these events that have happened, even though they don't know all of the facts, they don't entirely know what's happened. They've made up their mind on it. And 
you know, it felt like quite relevant social commentary. I liked they had it here and they did it in a way that didn't feel heavy handed. It wasn't like they were really referencing particular real life events. I felt like it was just a nice relevant bit of social commentary they decided to add in here, uh, which did hit, I thought, and it did feel relevant. And of course, the dialogue you get about the commenting, the characters commenting on the state of current horror. And there's this monologue that Mindy has at the college to all the characters about franchises and who and why that could, you know, exonerate some of them, some of them as being suspects. I had a lot of fun with that. And of course, we get Kirby back here, the surviving uh, character that was stabbed in Scream 4. And Whilst I did really enjoy seeing her here, you know, she had a good, she had a good character moment and she had some good scenes. Uh, she definitely has a different vibe from Screen 4, I think. You know, obviously the fact that it's the age gap, you know, the movie is from 12 years ago and that's, that's the time span in the film as well. So, you know, when you first, in Screen 4, she's this very cool, very hip, 18-year-old high school girl. Uh, and now she's a 30-year-old FBI agent. <laughs> so there's definitely a different vibe about her. And I'm not, I'm not sure everyone will like that. I do think a little bit of what was charming about her in 4 doesn't necessarily carry over to here. Uh, if you can just kind of take her on her own terms, how she's in this film, I think you'll enjoy it. She's a good character. Um, but yeah, it's kind of weird when you bring back a character so much later, I think it does lose a little bit of that charm they brought previously. So just a couple of my like mixed negative thoughts here. Uh, and one of them is I felt like they could have done more with the location they had. You know, obviously this thing being set in New York, I didn't always feel the scale of that. You know, I said like, like I said at the beginning, there was some really good sequences. The one on the subway, I really loved. Uh, and you've got another really cool scene as well with Gail, like now that lives in this big high rise. Uh, and you know, there's a big sequence that plays out there, which is really cool. But uh, I did feel like the first 30, 40 minutes or so, we're kind of confined to a lot of these kind of smaller, dark locations, like college dorms and dark streets and just smaller areas. Um, that I just felt like was it could have been set anywhere in a way. Um, so I felt like they could have just done a little bit more with that. And to be fair, you know, I've never been to New York. I don't know what it's like. So maybe, you know, someone will say it did capture the feel of it quite well. But I just feel like given this location, you know, looking at that poster, you know, Ghostface in New York, what are they going to do with this? I just felt like they could have done a little bit more with that. And the last thing being, you know, during the film where, you always have the guessing game in Scream. You know, it kind of had tricks the audience out, gives us little details uh, to keep us guessing about who the killer or killers, of course, might be. And I think they do that really well here. I enjoyed that a lot. They kind of fake out a lot of details. You know, they've done so many double bluffs before. It's impossible. It feels like it's impossible to guess sometimes. And even someone you're convinced of, it can easily end up turning that on its head and being someone completely different. Um, but I felt like in the final act here, so no spoilers, of course, but uh, and I can't really get into too much detail here. But I just felt like in the final act, I think I wanted more of that kind of like really oh shit moment. Um, and I don't think it had that the way it set it up. It felt like something massive could happen and it didn't. I would say nothing it was not the, the reveals were not uh, didn't blow me away. Uh, and I don't think, you know, this will stand up to the likes of the original. Like, to me, the reveals of the original uh, stick, will stick with me a lot more, I think, than this one. So, yeah, overall, my thoughts. This is another great Scream film to add to the franchise. I had such a good time going to see this. You know, it's funny. It's bloody. It's got a lot of really exciting sequences. Some great character moments and will definitely keep you guessing all the way up to the end. So it's definitely a recommend from me. Get a load of your friends together and go and see this one out of the cinemas. So thank you very much for watching my review of Scream 6. I'll be doing a, a franchise ranking video, going through all of the movies in the franchise, all six, to discuss the worst of the best. That'll be a lot of fun. So definitely come back for that. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my video and I'll see you next time.